Awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Product School Talk. Happy New Year. I'm glad to be back. Uh, today, we have a special guest with us. His name is Vivek Betty. He's the product manager for LearnVest. So hi, Vivek. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to get started by giving everybody a, uh, an overview of your background. So can you talk about more how you broke into product management, where you got started? Sure. Um, so I was actually a double major in computer engineering, computer science from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Uh, so actually broke into product from the tech background. I was over at Goldman Sachs for about 13 years, started my career on the tech side, moved to product, did some stints at some startups, and now I'm at LearnVest slash Northwestern Mutual. Awesome. Thanks. Um, well, I know you have a presentation prepared for everyone today, so I'll give you a couple seconds to set that up and uh, start screen sharing. And, um, and guys, uh, whenever his, his presentation is over, of course, we're going to take questions. So you can type those in the comment section right underneath the live video. So just um, make sure you're all set and ready to go. And then we'll get started. Great. Looks like I'm ready. Awesome. Um, and the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Cassandra. Um, so I wanted to talk today about disrupting digital product cultures. It's actually a topic that I've been pretty passionate about in my current role at LearnVest slash Northwestern Mutual. Um, a little bit about culture. Uh, you know, just thinking about culture in general, it really you know, many companies have different cultures. If you think about Apple with their culture or even Ikea with low cost furniture, every company has different cultures, but what does culture really mean, right? And what I really think of it as how we do things around here, right? And how are we perceived internally and externally? That's what really a lot of companies are striving for is changing the way that they do things and you know how they're perceived. And that's really become what the poster model of what culture has really become in a company. Now, changing culture is not easy, right? It doesn't take a message from the CEO. It rarely comes from top down. It's really all about precision and sensitive nudges. You can't really convince people to change. Small changes are really what really makes the big difference. I relate this to when my actually I was getting my dad to use the iPhone, right? Um, I told him that everybody's using iPhones. This is the smartphone technology. And he was resistant to change because he was happy with his phone. But then when we got on Facebook and he wanted to see pictures of the grandkids, he came to realize that these subtle nudges and now he actually uses an iPhone. He actually sent me a Snapchat request and I'm not even on Snapchat. So, um, you know, it's really about subtle changes and small changes really make the difference when you think about changing culture. It's a lot like fashion in many ways, not that I should be talking about fashion, but, you know, if a new trend starts, it's really because of word of mouth, right? Something spreads through magazines, through circles, through celebrities, and then it cascades out. Again, it wasn't something that was kind of dictated from the top, and it really spread through osmosis and through the community. There's six levels of culture that we personally use here. A few are formal, a few are informal. Leadership, it's important. Again, it can't be a message from top down. You have to walk the walk. You have to talk the talk when it comes to culture. A great example is Mark Zuckerberg. Know him well, right? He wears, or anyone at Apple, where they, the way that they dress in executive meetings and the way that they you know, perceive themselves, that's a culture that they walk when they're in their leadership roles. Second, I'd say is clear roles. Many times the confusion and culture, it just boils down to what is my role? What am I supposed to be doing? If we clearly define the roles of the various product managers, engineers, development leads, and what their roles are, it really makes for the culture migration a lot smoother and reward people, right? Um, obviously, compensation is important, but recognition, awards, any way that you can kind of recognize people for adopting culture or some of the uh, you know, successes they've had really helps with the culture movement. Some of the more informal ones that are important to me is role models. Um, you know, we have a team called our product specialist team here. Their job is literally to go out and act it, do it, right? Go back and show how we're working in a different way when it comes to our advisors. There's 8,000 in the field, by the way, or our home office employees, and really kind of bringing that together. Um, networks, you got to build networks, and you got to be open to change, right? Changing behavior is important as well. So how does this relate to us? at LearnVest and Northwestern Mutual. Um, two years ago, this was our Northwestern Mutual digital experience, okay? 
information overload. There was a lot of information thrown at you. It was difficult to understand. You actually needed your advisor to be with you, right? To actually explain what's happening on our digital experience. Um, critical experiences were missing. Uh, we didn't have a mobile presence and not shocking for the life insurance industry, but there was no mobile presence. You had to be an actual Northwestern mutual client to log in to any experience. If you think about companies like Mint and LearnVest and Betterment, they all have free accounts that you can access. Um, there was no sharing tools amongst the advisor as well as the, um, the customer and self-service was a pain, right? Um, I remember my first when I took on the role, it was Friday night. I don't know why I was doing this on a Friday night, um, but I wanted to log into my Northwestern Mutual account. I've been a policyholder for five years through my Goldman days. And um, I wanted to log in and I forgot my password, um, <laughs> right? And I couldn't figure out how to log in. So a message said, call 8 a.m. Monday morning central time to reset your password, right? In today's age, a lot of password resets, logins, changing the frequency of your bill pay, a lot of that was missing two years ago. I'm proud to say here's where we are now, right? Um, and it's really been what we just crossed 1 million users using the digital experience. You can see the design. It's clean. It's friendly. We have a mobile presence and we're engaging with our clients day in and day out. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of areas where we've really improved it from the account aggregations, linking your external assets. We have insurance pages now that really provide details of how things are working and what do they mean for you. Investment pages, um, really bringing in market commentary, podcasts, videos, a lot of that to really kind of educate the user on what's happening. Um, NorthwesternMutual.com, our branding website, we recently launched that as well. It's much more consumer friendly. You'll see mar beautiful marketing imagery. Um, an interesting stat here that I like to remind folks is about two months ago before we did the uh, relaunch of our brand website, about 63% of our folks that came to the website left after one click, right? Um, now we have uh, about 163% um, um, increase of folks are staying. They're staying on the site. They're consistently looking up information. And we have a mobile presence. We have Android. We have um, iOS. And you can do a lot of the things that you can do on the website on the mobile app as well, um, as well as our login registration. Remember my story about not being available um, to uh, reset my login? Now we have the ability to do that. We actually have text confirmations happening as well. So how did we do all that? That's a drastic change in two years, if you think about it, right? Quite a bit has changed in our experience. And, you know, a lot of it has been just kind of historically Northwestern Mutual, as well as many big companies, have been a project management oriented discipline, right? Um, if, and you guys are probably familiar with this, where you take requirements, you go back to your engineering team, and then months, maybe even at times quarters, and sometimes even a year later, you come back with the solution. So it's been very orientated towards scheduling, organization, and increments. And that's the waterfall approach, right? We all know it well. We came from that discipline at some point in our career. What we decided to do is actually move more, more of a product approach, where product sits right between the consumer, the business, and the digital. And you know, looking at the product principles of being okay with failing, iterating, moving faster, really doing all of that has helped us kind of move forward and make things happen. And we iterate. We put out releases every day. Um, a fun fact, I think I have a slide on this coming up. We went in 2015 from 85 releases to 170 in 2016 to last year to 1,400 releases. That's ex exponential growth, right? And it's really because of our okay with be okay being okay with the ability to fail and iterate and move faster and you know what it's really led to is if we kept on moving the way we were moving in the waterfall approach yeah eventually we would have delivered our solution but the business and market would have changed with our new approach we take smaller steps and we iterate sometimes we're not on course and sometimes we're not even sure where the ship's going but we keep moving and we actually end up where the opportunity actually will be tomorrow so it's been a uh, you know very fascinating to see how that's come to fruition. So how are all these products built, right? Talking about culture a little bit. Um, first thing I'd say is I took on the role um, at LearnVest about two years ago, running their product team. 
and we were acquired by Northwestern Mutual. So we are also acting as kind of their digital arm as well. Um, half of my team is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is where Northwestern Mutual's um, headquartered in. And half the team is here in New York. And it's been very interesting bringing those two cultures together, right? Um, as you can imagine in a startup, besides having beer on tap and wearing jeans in New York, the culture has been very much, let's put out something fast, right? Let's whiteboard it and let's de develop and deploy it that night. As opposed to Northwestern Mutual, it's been methodical, right? Let's make sure we're doing the right thing. Let's get sign off. There's stakeholders involved and let's make sure there's reputational risk, right? Um, that's accounted for. So bringing those two cultures together and managing a team across of that, that has been very fascinating for me, right? I, um, so some of the things that we've done as we blended these teams together is take the best of both. I don't actually think the right answer is either. The right answer is a little bit of both. And we've come to learn that. The first thing we did was we changed the way we work. Um, I remember I remember my first day at Northwestern Mutual, I asked, who owns mobile? Someone raised their hand and said, yeah, I kind of do, but I wait on her and she waits on him, right? And what, immediately what came to my mind is we need clear ownership. We need small pizza pie teams. You probably have heard the concept, but pizza pie teams shouldn't be bigger than a pizza pie box or two can serve. And we've really moved to that and really kind of helping break through the process. Uh, we have about 20 pizza pie teams today on the client experience team. We have another 20 on our other uh, planning experience team. They're a combination of a product manager, an engineering lead, a full stack engineering team, a designer, and a business partner. This has been very important and key. We've actually brought the business into our pizza pie teams, which has been fascinating because it really kind of reduces from overhead when it comes to going back and forth, meetings and organizations. So product managers aren't actually necessary quite a bit in our new model. Having these pizza pie teams has really kind of changed the way that we work um, and really you know, moved it forward. These, some of these teams are blended, right? The product manager might be in New York and the development team is in Milwaukee or vice versa. And we've really figured out a great cadence on how they're gonna work together. Um, they're having stand-ups and they're you know, talking to each other day in and day out and they work on two week sprints. Every two weeks, something is put out. Um, it could be a big release or it could be a, a combination of smaller releases, but we've gotten into the cadence that we're going to put releases of features out. We changed our approach too, um, right? Uh, remember I shared the story of gather requirements, go away, and then come back sometime later with the solution. That's not what we do anymore. What we do is we understand the business. We spend time learning the problem. We research, research, research. Um, we have an entire product research team that's focused on getting feedback. Um, we look at data and analytics, obviously, for but for me, equally important is balancing qualitative and quantitative. We spend a lot of time interviewing, getting feedback, feedback from our financial advisors and our clients. We've created two communities. One is called the Digital Experience Lab. It's about 500 digitally savvy advisors. Uh, we show them wires and you know um, uh, tweaks of things before we release them to get their feedback. Um, also, we've included about 4,000 clients where we interview them, give them promotions and find out how they feel about things before release. So very tapped into research. So first understand what the issue is, then really deep dive into the research and then break up the project. This is very key. Um, in order for us to maintain these 1400 plus releases this year, it was important to break up the project into small bits and bites so we can get to that two weeks cadence of putting something out over and over. And then we design something, get more feedback, right? So we're not developing anything yet and it's really kind of geared at getting more feedback are we thinking about this the right way we want to make sure what we're about to deploy or engineer still fits the business model as you guys can attest to the business is evolving every day so we want to make sure it's still relevant so we get that feedback again from our clients stakeholders we tweak redesign deploy test and off you go we deploy and then we start the whole process again right so I think with a lot of what we're doing with our pizza pie teams the work is never done Done. It's really kind of taking it to the next point and making it more, uh, taking it to fruition. 
the last thing I'd say is we changed the way we've released um, a lot more show and tell. Um, I got the best compliment that I ever got in my 17 years um, at an event that I was doing with some advisors. Um, we, they, after the event, we we're presenting a lot of what we're doing uh, in the a mobile space. Uh, one of the advisors came to me and said, that was a great show. Right. Um, and that was really telling to me what I instill a day in and day out in the team is forget the bullet points, forget the PowerPoints, really show, show what you're about to release. Even if it's early phases, get the feedback. If it's a button or if it's a big feature, get that feedback early. So we've been doing a lot more show and tell instead of presenting. And it's been very valuable and kind of taking us to the next step. Um, all said and done, this number is already outdated. I'm sorry, but yeah, we went from 89 releases to 177. We just broke 1400 this year, right? Um, 1405 to be exact. So bringing two of these cultures together, New York, Milwaukee, big company, small startup has really, really worked for us, right? And it's really kind of brought together the best of both worlds and um, taking us to that aspect. I also have a case study here that I gave in another presentation um, that I can also send over to the team. But as you can see, a lot has happened, right? A lot has changed. What I'd say, we've come really far. We have crossed a million users. We have a mobile presence now. We have digital loan repayment from a self-service standpoint. You can change your password. Yay. Um, your People are linking their external accounts. And honestly, we're just getting started. Um, you know, I was just talking to the team today and we're starting the plan for what our next 10 pizza pie teams are going to be doing as they move into next year. So that's what I have. I'm happy to take any questions that anyone might have on how we've come together in two companies and made this culture splash. And awesome. Thanks so much, Vivek. Um, great presentation. I know we have quite a few questions, I'm sure, that are going to come in soon. Um, if you could talk a little bit more about um, any advice that you have as far as people that are trying to break into product management now and, um, and, and what, what resources you think would be useful for them? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think product school is obviously amazing um, when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, breaking into product. I think breaking into product is actually interesting because it's a catch-22. A lot of companies are looking for product managers that have two to three year experience you never go to university or school for product management. You actually come in through different disciplines. That's why I think companies like Product School or you know, just getting out there and finding a mentor. I'm, oh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm open to always coffee chats and I do that quite a bit. I think it's really building that network and opening those doors. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Um, I think that's important. Please work your network, other networks to find opportunities to get the foot in the door. Um, what I'd say about some of the skill sets that I I look for in a product manager. Um, I generally skew towards someone that has a technical background. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a developer. It doesn't mean you have to code. It means you have to at least understand the technology. It's important for a product manager to understand the technology and also defend it. Um, second, I'd say an amazing storyteller. For me, being a good product manager means you can tell the story, right? Tell the story of yourself. Right your products and all of that that's involved. Um, and third, obviously the basics, right? Being able to kind of write the user stories and all the things that you would learn in any schooling or curriculum. And the fourth one I'd say, which is the most important to me is uh, being a balance of strategic and tactical. Um, you know, it's always good to have a roadmap and a strategy, but we also have to really think about how to be tactical and get things done, right? That's really mm -hmm move us towards that North Star. So those are some of the things I look for and those are some of the resources I would tap into. Awesome, thank you. Um, and as, uh, yeah, as predicted, we have quite a few questions. So um, I'm gonna take this first one from Andrew. So uh, Vivek, do you prototype and test designs before any code gets written? Yes, so we prototype and we create wires. Um, usually I skip through it very early in the presentations, but they're usually black or whites, right? Um, and we'll spend quite a bit of time with our, those communities I talked about, the 4,000 clients, the 3,000, 5,000, 500 advisors, and really kind of nitpick and make sure a lot of that makes sense before we move into development. And then it's a cyclical process, right? Once we move to the next iteration, while we're developing, we're also thinking about version two of the black and whites, and eventually it moves to color. Um, so a along the entire process, prototyping and development is going hand in hand. Okay, awesome. Um, this next question is from Steven. Um, how do you line all of the releases 
or team focuses so they relate to the key company goals? Yes, that's a good one. Someone actually just asked me this today. We have 40 pizza pie teams. How do you make sure that they're all do marching towards the same way, right? Um, so what we do is, I'm not a big believer in process, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think all 40 pizza pie teams have their own cadence, right? We don't, besides the fact that we mandate that we use a certain set of tools to communicate with each other, if you want to meet with your team four times a week, great. Um, as long as you and your dev leave had figured that. If you want to meet once a week, that's great, right? As So the way that the interaction between the teams happen is really, and some of the backlog items, of what they're thinking about is always really empowered by the team. Now, what we do, um, this is me personally, um, I spend one meeting every two weeks and I get all the pizza pie team PMs as well as the dev leads in a room, right? And this is not a meeting to present to anybody in the team about what they're working on to get buy-in, et cetera. It's literally a, we go around the room and every single person has about three to five minutes. We actually have a timer and we go through what are the next releases coming in the next 30 days from a feature standpoint and what are some of your dependencies? And what's been eye-opening in that meeting is we'll find pizza pie product manager for team A hadn't talked to pizza pie product manager for team L and they're both working on billing one for mobile one for web great that's a dependency that we've pinpointed in this meeting we're not going to spend time solving that here you two can go off now and kind of think about how to tackle that and what I've noticed in that in type of uh, setup is we pinpointed so many dependencies and the team feels so valued that the fact that we're using the time wisely, right? We're not trying to use that time there to sell it um, and we're not solving it. Um, so that's one of the approaches we've been using. Okay, great. Um, let's see, we have so many. Um, <laughs> Theodore, um, okay, so from this is from Theodore. I'm assuming the phil uh, philosophical Fickle change from waterfall to agile wasn't an overnight shift and required a lot of like coaching champion along the way. So can you speak to what strategies or tactics help you bring change to the way people thought about product de development? Yeah. I mean, Hey, that is very, <laughs> it's a great point. It was <laughs> easy, right? It took quite a bit of time. And in two years, we've come quite a long way. Um, you know, I think a lot of it, so uh, I'll, I'll touch a minute on the things that I thought weren't easy. And the hardest things for me personally was the cultural differences, right? I think if you think about somebody who's driving a car hundred miles per hour versus someone who's driving at 10 miles per hour, one's more careful, one's more dangerous, one's moving faster, one's moving slower. So it was a lot of that, that we had to think that through, right? And the answer wasn't either car was driving right. Um, the answer was to drive 60, right? So we actually spent quite a bit of time thinking about examples, um, you know, thinking about areas where does this, you know, I, I talk very quickly about the 40 pizza pie teams, but a lot of it was matchmaking. It was like dating. A lot of times the product manager and the development lead just didn't get along. They were both great, but they weren't the right fit for each other. So it was a lot of moving people around, finding the right fit, getting the company and the organization okay with the risk of not of failing and possibly not doing the right thing, right? Um, going out and building these communities, a lot of, um, you know, trial and error. So it wasn't easy and there's no, you know, prescriptive answer I can give you. A lot of this is more of an art than a science. We spent quite a bit of time in kind of analyzing and spending that. I'll tell you a lot of my time in the last two years actually hasn't been product development and it's really been kind of relationship management and looking at the organization and finding those sticky points that that makes sense. Um, not easy, but whoever asked that question, happy to yeah. paint. I can give you a longer <laughs> answer offline. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Um, now this next one is from Nivedita. Um, okay. How do you do integration testing or combined testing when you have multiple teams working on the same project? Yeah. So we actually have, um, I didn't talk about this, but we've embedded testing and QA into our pizza pie teams too. Right. Okay. So that's actually made that quite a bit. So if you look at our pizza pie team, there's a product manager, a development lead, engineers and developers, design and QA and integration testers as well. Right. And that's actually made things quite a bit um, uh, very streamlined. So you right there and also the business partner, I'm sorry. And it's very much streamlined the process because now while that QA 
a representative or that tester or that business partner or that designer doesn't report into product when it comes to the organization, they're aware. They have you know be, the feet on the streets of what's happening in that pizza pie team. So as they're going back to their leadership, they're bringing back all of the projects that are happening on each pizza pie team and integration and testing is happening across. The product manager then kind of steps in and makes sure through the testing cycle that we're looking at a day-to-day -day analysis of um, how things are happening and we're moving it forward. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay, we have time for probably two more questions. So I'm gonna take this next one from William. Um, how do you share findings or activities from your research team with the delivery pizza teams? Yeah, so the research team is not embedded into the pizza pie teams. Um, that's actually an auxiliary function that we have. Uh, so what happens is the, the product manager's job is to work with our research teams and our, we have a few, to be honest with you, and they're the ones that are helping draft. Um, so remember we talked about the black and white wireframes. They're the ones that are going to, with an idea and saying, I think I want to do this. And I don't, I'm not sure if it will resonate. Can you help me find the right people that'll go and figure out if this is the right thing for us to do? So we'll have, we'll use usertesting.com from general population. We'll use our field. We'll use our clients. We'll help with our research team, come up with the right prescriptive questions. A lot of it are clickable prototypes where they can answer yes, no, like, don't like, would like to see this feature. Why haven't we thought of this? And all of that then comes back to our research team and they then put that together and almost present it back to the product manager as here is my findings, right? And then the product manager and the research analyst go back and forth. They might do a few iterations of the testing until the product manager feels comfortable. This is something we want to do, right? So that interaction is very tight because the research team sits within product and that helps. Okay. Makes sense. Um, here, let's see. We have another one from, okay. Um, Someone, okay, this one here um, from Siddharth. Um, how do you measure the success of a product and what would be your process for prioritizing features on your product roadmap? And along with that, what's the biggest challenge of a product manager? So a few questions there, but. Okay, uh, <laughs> let me see if I can get the first one. Uh, what was <laughs> okay, so how do you measure the success of a product and what would be your process for prioritizing features on your product roadmap? Okay, how do I measure success? Um, I think as a product manager to measure success is, you know, I threw up numbers, I threw up releases. For me, it's a lot about customer satisfaction. Beside, behind every pizza pie team, there's a client, there's a user, right? Mm -hmm. um, how well are they satisfied with the work that we're doing? And that can be measured with a satisfaction score or numbers or money that we're bringing in for that client, right? If it's a sales organization or frankly, just releases, right? Um, so I think a lot of product managers really need to think about how are we measuring success and equate it back to what is the satisfaction that the customer is using? That's why it's important to add the business partners in there because the uh, for every business partner, if you're, if you're a business partner is an operations oriented person versus a sales oriented person, those metrics will be different. And I think it's very important for the product manager to spend time understanding what is success for the business. So that's part A. Um, I think part B, remind me what was part B? Uh, what would be your process for prioritizing features on your product roadmap? Yes. So I think the process for prioritizing for us is really kind of geared at data, feedback, mm -hmm. ROI. Is this going to move the needle? Is this going to help more business, right? And that's why I think bringing that business partner in has really been helpful because sometimes we'll have ideas. Sometimes they'll come from the business and sometimes we'll actually find a combination of them are the right one or neither of them are, right? So spending a lot of time doing use case studies, we do scenarios. Um, and that's why some, to the earlier question, do we prototype before we go into development? Yeah, we actually even do analysis of even if we should move to prototype before we go to development. We don't want to waste development development resources on something that might not be a good fit. So we spent quite a bit of time prioritizing mm -hmm. by running scenarios and use cases. Um, and I think the third part was what is the toughest part for the product manager, right? right. Um, the toughest part I've noticed for anyone on my team or even me as a product manager has been navigating an, a conference room when there's differing opinions and it's your call, right? So you'll have someone in one, the marketing team asking for A and the tech team saying we can't do A and then the operations team saying, why don't we do B? And they're all looking to you to help really kind of steer that ship. 
Um, and I think that's a really difficult responsibility. Um, and it's, it's nothing you can read in a book. And I think that really comes with practice on stakeholder management and really kind of bringing people together to really move the needle forward, right? Um, and I think that's a really hard aspect of product that you know takes quite a bit of time and practice to get to. Right, absolutely. Um, well, that's all the time we have for today. So thanks so much, Vivek, for a great presentation and getting to all those questions. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks everyone who joined us. Um, if you guys want more information, you can find us at productschool.com and we host these uh, webinars every Thursday as well as events at all of our campuses. So uh, thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.